Good morning. We will begin momentarily. Please maintain silence in the audience and at the dais for the next 20 seconds. Again, please maintain silence in the audience and at the dais for the next 20 seconds. Thank you. Morning and welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Water and Power Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. This proceeding is being broadcast on channel 35 and the exact broadcast times can be found by contacting channel 35. Board of Water and Power Commissioners, please stay present for roll call. Commissioner Katz. Present. Commissioner Lair. Present. President McLean Hill. Uh, present. Commissioner McGraw. Vice President Neiman Brady. Present. Core board members, a quorum is present. Madam President. Um, thank you. Uh, I did want to open this meeting with a with uh, some very brief remarks. We are uh, moving into the uh, holiday season and closing off what has uh, been an interesting um, year and certainly for me a interesting um, last few weeks. Um, so what I'd like to say is this, um, throughout my tenure on the Board of Water and Power Commissioners, uh, I've always strived to conduct myself in the process of carrying out the city's business on behalf of the people of Los Angeles with a high degree of integrity professionalism and public policy leadership. The emphasis of my work has been to position our city's major utility to fully engage its diverse communities with the overarching goal of meeting our residents' needs and helping to prepare our residents for their clean energy future. I want to say thank you to all of the people who've reached out to me over the last several days, especially those of you who work at this department. As we head into thanks the Thanksgiving holiday, you are among the things that I will appreciate most. Um, with that, I'd like to open up the floor for general public comment. Shante. Public comment is open. There are no general public comments, but we have a commenter for item 15. Public comment is now closed at this time. Thank you. And we'll call item 15 special so that we can take comments at that time on that item. Uh, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Madam President and board members. Uh, I I thought I had a very brief report. It seems we've gotten a little bit longer, but I'll try to make do it quickly. <laughs> so first of all, over the weekend, I think everyone's aware of the uh, the uh, fire that occurred under the 10 freeway that's caused a uh, closure. It was on Saturday morning. Um, we uh, I want to commend our crews that, that uh, were on hand. Uh, the power system responded. They had to de-energize lines, uh, uh, replace a pole, uh, several spans of wire, and wash uh, conductors that had a lot of uh, soot would have shorted out. And so they remained on scene uh, during and after the fire, and, uh, and and the city appreciates their assistance. Water system crews were also there to ensure there's adequate water supply and then actually increase water pressure in the area fighting the fire. So I want to thank our crews for their work, as well as our own emergency management folks who did a great job of making sure that we had good information flow in the department and that we participated with the city's uh, uh, partially activated EOC. Uh, uh, I did issue a bulletin uh, uh, Sunday evening uh, to our employees about traffic and about the traffic concerns. Uh, it, that's been an evolving issue uh, as as the cities and Caltrans and and uh, Metro have, have jointly worked to develop traffic flow plans. Um, uh, at the mayor's request, 
uh, there's a recommendation for as many people, not just city staff, and anyone who can telecommute that has to travel through that area to please do so to lessen the burden on traffic. Um, this morning, um, the governor announced that they had enough assessment to know they were not gonna have to rebuild the freeway, but it'd be a three to five week closure uh, while they brace underneath it. Um, I was there yesterday with a tour with uh, a number of uh, city managers, and it's, it's pretty interesting when you see a close hand how, how bad the fire was and the damage that it did. But they do expect to be up and running five weeks on the outside. And so uh, we have asked our employees and their managers to, uh, particularly those that are affected by that area of commuting to, uh, uh, to continue our telecommuting and uh, make sure that's offered where, where it makes sense. Uh, right after our last board meeting, we had um, the uh, Society of Women Engineers uh, National Conference at the Convention Center. Uh, it was very well attended. Our goal was to uh, you know, promote opportunity and recruit more women into our workforce. Uh, a number of our employees uh, were on site, not just to attend, but also to help us host uh, one of the largest, most prominent booths at the Convention Hall. Our, our outreach included uh, uh, digital informational screens. Uh, we had a lounge uh, for on-site interviews and exchange of information, and we did a virtual reality space for touring a power station. Uh, throughout the conference, we had videos playing of our own uh, employees uh, talking about the jobs that they do. Uh, we conducted on-site interviews and made conditional uh, offers of employment, and some of those were uh, accepted, which is great, and uh, we have about 40 more candidates who are scheduled for interviews in the near future. So that was a great success, and I'd like to thank uh, all the staff that put that together, particularly the women from the Department of Water Power who uh, went there not only to enjoy the event, but also to work hard on behalf of uh, this agency. Uh, to further celebrate uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, De Colores Presente, the art exhibit, debuted last month. Uh, I unfortunately was out of town, so I missed that, but I appreciate uh, President McLean Hill and uh, Senior AGM Greg Reed, uh, and I know Aram and others that were there that spoke and introduced that, uh, that uh, um, exhibit. Uh, there was a special reception uh, last November 9th for employees and community members. It featured uh, uh, artists that had uh, artwork there, as well as a curator to Joy Anderson and Summer Bernal and music by uh, Adika Adule. Uh, that exhibit will remain up through the end of the calendar year and it's open for members of the public to come and enjoy it as well during our business hours. Um, I'd like to recognize Joe Romalo and his team uh, this week at the American Public Power Association's Customer Connections Conference, our employee newsletter contact, which many of you remember the hard copy, now it's all uh, done uh, virtually online, is honored with an Excellence in Public Power Communications Award uh, for the print and digital category. And Contact's been around since 1972 as an inf informal journal of uh, accomplishments going out the department, uh, sharing stories that spotlight some of our internal initiatives and feature employees doing, uh, doing the work that they do and truly trying to educate all of our employees and staff about uh, about the things the department's interested in and in doing and the accomplishments uh, and work of different groups, uh, particularly some groups that people don't understand what they do on a regular basis, a way to daylight a lot of really important things that are going on. Uh, since 2022, contact went completely digital and uh, we were able to put more on the, uh, uh, more information in it that way as well. So congratulations to Communications and Corporate Strategy Division and particularly the folks, the, the writers, uh, graphic designers, photographers, and the AV techs and the contact editor who uh, uh, coordinated this. And it's really nice to receive this award and get this recognition. Next, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Simon, uh, who has a brief uh, highlight on uh, the uh, Navajo mutual aid training that just completed. Go ahead, Simon. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marty. Um, for a third year in a row, um, uh, from October 16th to November 9th, uh, LADWP crews participated in mutual aid training exercise with the Navajo Tribal U Utility Authority uh, to connect families of the Navajo Nation to the electric grid for the first time. Uh, uh, DWP crews uh, included personnel from the power transmission and distribution, power construction and maintenance, uh, fleet and aviation services in the Office of Manage Emergency Management. Um, our crews gained uh, valuable experience uh, uh, during their stay uh, and work at uh, the Navajo Nation, working in challenging conditions uh, in isolated areas uh, on a 10-hour workday to finish these projects. In total, the crew completed 
uh, electrical wiring and panel installations on 45 residences. Our line crew specifically uh, uh, installed uh, more than 302 poles. Uh, that's about seven miles of uh, conductor uh, 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 wiring. Um, and these were uh, done in partnership with the uh, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority. Uh, this uh, was a, a true demonstration of collaboration between LADWP and the uh, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority. Um, uh, it's important to note that uh, all uh, DWP crew members volunteered for, uh, to participate in this project. In fact, we had more volunteers than the people we were able to send. Um, I would like to recognize and thank an, each and every um, LADWP personnel and crew that worked uh, for four weeks to positive, positively impact the lives and livelihoods of families. Uh, families who have applied to uh, and waited to get electricity service for 40 years and in some cases up to 55 years. Um, uh, something that we take for granted here um, uh, and, and many parts of the nation. Uh, and it was very uh, touching and a very impactful moment, uh, not only for those families, but for LADWP employees as well in part of this exercise. As a show of support, we were fortunate to have uh, Commissioner McGraw uh, joining us last week uh, with the Power System Leadership Team um, in visiting the crew uh, as they were working and uh, participating in an appreciation event that was organized by the uh, Navajo Tribal Utility Authority and the community members, uh, hearing the testimonials and remarks uh, by the various family members was uh, extremely touching. And all of us came back with uh, a really new perspective and insight about the work we do and uh, the impact we have on people's lives. This was uh, a real proud moment for LADWP and specifically for Power System and what we do in uh, really touching people's lives and improving uh, their quality of life. Uh, our audiovisual uh, team, including a communication team, put together a brief uh, uh, slide deck here and uh, I think it's playing and we can keep on playing the uh, slides until the end. But I would like to thank everyone who participated in this effort. Um, there will be more communication with the Navajo uh, uh, Tribe Utility Authority in the future on how we can do this better. But um, uh, this was, uh, by all means, a, a very successful effort. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Simon. And. Uh I know Commissioner McGraw is not here, but to echo uh, what he said, uh, we were on the State Water Project tour over the weekend with Commissioner Katz as well. He made the comment that uh, the, the crews had gotten power down one particular area, but were, did not actually hook up one or two particular homes, and and uh, and that was going to be saved for next year. And apparently, our guy said that's not going to do. And he said they put an inordinate number of poles. I want to say 70 poles in one day, the last day, um, to get those people energized. And so it was uh, quite impressive work by our crews. And we appreciate the, what they've done, and appreciate Commissioner uh, McGraw for getting getting there to be part of that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, the slide playing is great. Thank you. So thank you, Simon. Um, I'd like to announce that Anselmo Collins, uh, his leadership was recognized on the state level. He uh, recently was elected the board chair of the California Urban Water Agencies. It's a group of the, the 11 largest uh, water agencies in California. <laughs> and uh, they actually represent uh, water service to about 70 plus percent of Californians. And uh, the group gets together. Um, Sometimes there's some unlikely folks that would be in the same room uh, <laughs> over the years, but uh, they collaborate very well together, the, the heads of these agencies, to uh, help uh, further uh, water policy in the state, work closely with the uh, regulatory and elected officials in the governor's office in making sure that uh, the needs and the interests of uh, urban water users are met and also try to improve the lives of Californians overall. So, Samuel, congratulations. And Thank you. I'm sure you'll be successful with that. And lastly, I'd like to turn it over to Anselmo. Um, on J2, the filed mm -hmm. item uh, in the board package, you have filed item recognition of our 2023 Recycled Water Customer of the Year. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Anselmo to actually recognize those people publicly uh, here at the board. At the board. Great. Right. Thank you, Marty. Good morning, Commissioners. So since 2013, LADWP has awarded the Recycled Water Customer of the Year Award to one of its Recycled Water customers to recognize their achievements in using recycled water and for their support of water conservation and sustainability for the city. This item that's, uh, like Marty mentioned, item J2 before you, is to recommend that the Board of Water and Power Commissioners recognize LA Uni Unified School District's Sonia Sotomayor Arts and Science Sciences Magnet School as a 2023 Recycled Water Customer of the Year. 
Sotomayor Magnet is being recognized for their dedication to the use of recycled water, using nearly 100% recycled water to irrigate their four acres and for their innovative use of recycled water as part of their science curriculum as well. They have what they call the farm, where they, they teach uh, science there, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so with that, I'm pleased to uh, uh, pleased for you to join me in congratulating them for their efforts. Uh, today with us, we have a few members from LAUSD and also from the school. I'd like to introduce them, and if they can step up to the podium as well so they can receive the reward. We have Christos Krasilian, who is LAUSD's Chief Sustainability Manager. We also have uh, Leo Angulo, who is the school principal of Sonia Stomayor. And in the audience, we also have Jennifer Valdivia, who is the public information officer. So with this, I'm going to go up over there and give you with your award. And if you have any words you want to share, that would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm Leonel Angulo. I'm the proud principal of Sotomayor Magnet. Thank you for having me here. Uh, we want to <laughs> just go ahead and say thank you for partnering with us. For the last 13 years, we have used uh, recycled water uh, at our farm. I invite you. We have cows. We got pigs. We got we grow everything there. So whenever you want to come by, you're welcome to come uh, to Mr. Flores' farm. Our students are growing uh, all kinds of fruit and vegetables. And, are you, you know, located? you want to come and Pet yeah. the pigs. Um, come on <laughs> Where down. are you located? I am. Gla I'm in Glassell Park, so off of San Fernando Road. Really, really close. Well, you don't have to cross the ten, so that's a good thing. Um, so <laughs> know that right? we are here, and we are very proud to partner with everybody in LA uh, DWP. Thank you. So, Madam President, uh, Commissioners, to the leadership, and to our water systems. Thank you so much. Um, I want to share that as the Chief Equal Sustainability Officer for LA Unified School District, I'm very proud to be here accepting this award because it means a lot to our school district. We have four school sites right now that we're accepting recycled water, and there's four mo more that we have in planning and development, and we're ready to be able to turn those over as well. We're capturing over 18,000 square foot, uh, 18,100 cubic feet acres of uh, of uh, of water on on those four sites, and with a plan that we're going to be able to capture a lot more in the in the in the next few years once we complete the rest of them. What I want to share is that in 2014 we set up a goal to minimize our water consumption by 20 percent. Well, you know, I, I just want to share today that we're actually reduced consumption by 30 percent, and it's with your support. It's with your collaboration, so I want to thank you greatly for that, and certainly to avoid using a lot of the potable water and being able to, to use recycled water for irrigating our fields. So thank you, and it's a great honor to be with you here and accepting this award. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. May I comment on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I just want to say congratulations um, to LAUSD and to the school in particular. Um, it's wonderful to hear about the farm. I'll have to visit sometime. But it was also great to see in the board packet the beautiful native landscaping that you've done there. We know that access to nature is really important to um, children's health and well-being. And so I, I love to see that development at the school and just wanted to congratulate you on the award and your leadership. And I also loved uh, reading that you're going to be integrating recycled water potentially into the curriculum. There's so much potential for the physical school to also be a teaching and learning environment. So just wonderful work and thank you very much. So um, I'd like to make it. Say, I know Commissioner <laughs> Leo, <laughs> you have no idea how great, how like thrilled we are to have you here. And Commissioner yes. Lair uh, does not let an occasion uh, go by uh, without <laughs> discussing the importance of partnering with LAUSD. So we're really happy you're here. Yes, I'm really happy to be here. Yes, one of the largest landowners in the city of Los Angeles, important to note. Um, and uh, yes, I've been to the campus and I've seen um, the cows and uh, I have been involved in LA River uh, outreach that you have hosted and with the community and have worked with students. And I have a story I tell often about how when we were asking some of the students what they would like to see, what kind of experience they would like to have in some of the river projects that, that was in the future, 
one of them said, I really would like to have a place where nobody's cell phone works. And so we went through this whole conversation about if the cell phone doesn't work, uh, how can you make the cell phone not work? Said, she said, well, in our school, you know, I think it's about respecting one another. And I think maybe we could have special colored hats. And basically when you're in that group, you can't get the phone, you can't use your phone, and you can't, you know, you have to be, you have to be in a different modality. I mean, that was the kind of student that was participating. So congratulations, because you really do give them a lot of uh, sort of a platform for really meaningful learning and conversations. And so congratulations. Um, I just want to say that it is always um, incredibly important and gratifying to see how our policies uh, really show up on the ground. And we, you know, sitting in this room have to um, remain focused on the vast resources that we have and the way that we can magnify our impact by collaborating and partnering with um, other agencies and other, you know, service providers and other stakeholders in the community. NLAUSD has been a terrific partner. We really appreciate you being here, and I am desperate to now come by and see the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All of you are invited. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. And Madam President, that's the conclusion of my report. Unless there's any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any comments on the general manager's report? Nope. Um, I'd simply like to make one observation about uh, the conference, uh, the SHIP conference, and that is, uh, or SWE conference, that is having been there, um, was, as always, really excited and gratified to see the level of support from our male executives as well. Uh, that's the thing about LADWP, the men roll hard with the women, and they show up in numbers, and so it was great to be in the hospitality suite to see that level of representation, and I know that the women engineers really appreciate that, so I just wanted to make that comment, um, and I think uh, also to congratulate Anselmo, uh, and uh, with that, we will move to... Uh, introducing motions for future consideration. Yes, thank you. Um, so we will be introducing a motion on an upcoming uh, board meeting um, related to the Chatsworth Reservoir. And uh, it will be one in which um, uh, we will be exploring, uh, supporting the goals of the, the native species protection and enhancement uh, work uh, that the uh, LA um, has been um, advancing through its biodiversity goals. And um, the thought is that it is the only nature preserve in the city of Los Angeles, and um, there are special and uh, unique habitat uh, there for flora and fauna uh, and endangered species and species of special concern that we want to be very mindful for, but that we also want um, to be a, a location for broader use of the city in some capacity um, and access. And so this motion would be for the teams to explore um, the, the uh, funding, um, that whether it's federal, state, or local grants or other funding, um, to fund some sort of Chatsworth management plan. And uh, we will no doubt need assistance through uh, several parts of the city uh, to make this happen, but we'll be putting forth a motion, um, and uh, I applaud uh, uh, our fellow commissioners, uh, both Nareed and Mia, for their work in uh, supporting this. Uh, terrific. I look forward to seeing that and also um, to hearing from additional stakeholders around Chatsworth. So I know that that is uh, something that uh, Commissioner Katz uh, is... Uh, looking at helping to facilitate, and uh, it is an important piece of property. So I uh, look forward to that motion on an upcoming agenda. Um, Camden. 
Any comments from Rate Care Advocate? Yes, thank you. My name is Camden Collins. I'm the uh, Deputy Executive Director for the Office of Public Accountability. And Dr. Pickle wants you to know he's not off celebrating National Pickle Day, although it is National Pickle Day, he's home with a cold. So um, I just couldn't pass that up uh, as um, a false reason for his absence. But we would like to note our support for agenda items six, seven, eight, nine, and 13 will be available for questions on any other items board members would like to discuss in detail. And that is all. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Um, any comments or impact statements from our neighborhood councils? No community impact statements or formal positions were filed by any neighborhood councils on any of the items on today's agenda. Okay, perfect. Uh, then um, we have a consideration of uh, items. Um, that uh, to be uh, approved, uh, item L1 is being deferred at this time uh, uh, at the request of the COO. And item 15, we have a specific public comment on that item. So we'll take that item special. Are there any other items that board members would like to hear special? All right, then is there a motion with respect to L2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, and uh, 18? I think I may need to recuse from 19. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Um, so items L2, or the items that I've just previously uh, yes. called out. Is there a motion? Um, motion to approve the items as described. Seconded. Uh, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Katz? <coughs> Aye. Commissioner Lair? Aye. President McLean Hill? Aye. Vice President Neiman Brady? Aye. Four ayes, motion adopted. All right. And uh, do you want to do 19 now and step out or? Uh, I'll just, what we just go through the, well, let's see where we are. We'll, we'll go through the agenda and we'll take up 15 and 19. Okay. At the same Sounds time. Good. Um, so that is great. Can we now move to um, management reports? Beginning with facilities. Yes, and I'll turn it over to Aram to introduce the team, take the lead on the report. We, we have a presentation on the facilities plan and then uh, Tom DeSmith. Uh, has a PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll follow up with questions and answers. And while you're coming to the uh, table, I simply want to uh, acknowledge the incredible work and my extreme delight at the fountains uh, and the water. <laughs> um, walking up to the building this morning was absolutely extraordinary. There was a rainbow in the water. Uh, a couple of, uh, last week when we had the artist reception uh, and members of the public at the building, the fountains were in full display and the lights were on. And I know that I gush over this building all the time, but I do consider it one of the most remarkable and significant public holdings of the city of LA. It's mm -hmm. not just a building, it's an asset that belongs to the public. And it's simply delightful to see it being presented again fully. Um, so congratulations and thank you to your entire team and to all of the people who are both here and those have, who have left, because this has been a long time long coming yes. to make this happen. So um, please, your well, presentation. Thank you. That has certainly been a labor of love. Um, <laughs> there's too many groups to try to acknowledge right here, but there will be a write-up coming forth on it, you know, um, and we'll be able to fully acknowledge all the groups that were involved in getting the fountains back that. up and the uh, commissioning of the the fountains and the moat is still in progress. So you're gonna see, see some more improvements as, as we move forward. But in the meantime, you can enjoy the, the moat and the fountains in their full glory with the new lighting system and everything else. So thank you for acknowledging that. Good morning, Commission. I'm Tom D. Smet, Director of Facility Services. 
I'm here today to provide you with a high level view of some of the unique facility plans in the works designed to improve the way we serve both our customers and our employees. The first, uh, the first one is LA Connect. To improve the way that DWP conducts business with its customers, LA Connect brings many public facing counters, including water and power new business, encroachments, and key accounts into one location. The proposed, oh, this is not, there it is. The proposed location is at 221 North Figueroa Street, also known as Fig Plaza. This will create a shared campus with some of LA City's other public counters, building and safety and planning, which are already located in the Fig Plaza campus. Along with some system and back-end improvements, this facility will be designed to make our customers feel comfortable in an open and welcoming waiting area and seated semi-private plan review stations. <laughs> customers will enjoy an easy to use scheduling system that will enhance communication so they will always know the status of their project and reduce the amount of time spent at our location. And a concierge will be on site to walk customers through every step of the process. Sorry. Okay, so moving on, LA Connect eHub. These electric vehicle charging hubs will be located throughout the city of Los Angeles and along some of Southland's busiest travel corridors. They're open to the public, but uniquely benefit LA DWP customers by integrating their home service rates into all of the eHub locations. Customers can simply log into their account and they would pay what they would pay if they plugged their car into a home charger and the charging fees will be reflected on their DWP bill. These hubs will utilize 350 kilowatt fast chargers, each one capable of charging a single vehicle to 80% in 10 minutes, or two vehicles to 80% in 20 minutes. Just enough time to run a quick errand, grab a cup of coffee, or take a quick break in our comfortable lounge. Each full service location will be easily identifiable with LA Connect eHub branding, We'll have security, a lounge, a patio, and restrooms. Solar canopies with battery storage will benefit nearby high density housing and critical facilities during outages, and the facilities can act as cooling centers for the community during heat wave events. The next initiative is LA Work Hub. We all know that telework has become an integral part of the modern work culture. Although telework can provide employees with a better work-life balance, keeping employees connected to our organizational culture can be a challenge. LA Work Hubs will benefit our employees and work groups by offering flexible spaces that can be reserved by individuals or groups through hoteling software. The hubs will be situated throughout the city of LA, so employees who don't have the ideal home office setup can reserve a workstation in a hub location that is convenient for them. Employees will have the advantages of connectivity to the DWP network and the ability to scan, print, and copy, which can be challenging from a home office. Managers and supervisors can hold group meetings, retreats, and training by reserving one of the various sized rooms for their group. Every DWP employee who uses a hub can also enjoy the various collaborative work areas and lounge-like networking areas to connect with other employees fostering team building and connectivity to the organization. This work atmosphere and amenities such as the available coffee and snacks will make at work days very fulfilling for our employees. The convertible meeting rooms can also be used for disaster operations centers during emergencies when long commutes can be the most challenging. And the last initiative that I'm gonna speak on today will be uh, mini yards. We all know moving around the city can be quite an investment in time. Too much time that should be spent fixing a water main break, restoring power, or making a location safe is spent by the crew sitting in traffic. In order for DWP to provide customers with service that is more timely, we have to decentralize our district operations. The mini yard concept will enable us to do this without the need to build additional large district yards that require substantial land purchases and building construction. These yards will be strategically placed in areas that we do not have an existing facility and where response times historically have been the greatest. These will be approximately one acre in size, will either be a vacant land lot or contain an industrial type building. 
Each site will be secure and will be used to stage one to two crews with essential equipment and tools. Resupply will occur through mobile distribution channels where the supervisor can place an order through an automated system or app and delivery can be made by bringing all materials and drop shipping a container or pod that contains everything they need. Any facilities brought to the vacant yards will be portable to enable the crews to redeploy to areas in higher demand. Supervisors can handle their office duties at a nearby LA work hub from a mobile office or from home. And then all this, so that the support functions for these crews still exist, such as vehicle maintenance. It's still available in, at existing larger district facilities that we already have in service now. With this, I conclude my report and we'll entertain any questions. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, comment, I, I'm definitely excited to see this, uh, especially this last strategic initiative, thinking you know, about how to reduce response time and really make sure that our field operations are where they need to be in the city. I was wondering for the um, employee hub areas and also the electric vehicle charging hubs, whether you have any maps or list of locations that you could share with us? It, if you don't have it in front of you, that's fine. You could send it by email or. I don't have the maps in front of me and I, and I, I was, the, the intent is to do a deeper dive into this at future board meetings, but right now it's Great. a high level overview. We do have um, for the, um, the e-hubs, <laughs> the charging locations, we do have uh, two locations being planned to be opened in the fourth quarter of 2024. Um, and where are those? One's going to be in the valley, in the uh, Van Nuys area, or Panorama City area. And then the other one will be um, down on uh, South LA, on Normandy. Okay, and you said that you're prioritizing areas where there's higher density and people may not have access to home charging? Yes, Excellent. correct. Especially in the initial... Uh, Roll out of this, and then some. Some of these locations. When I say a full service yard that'll have all the amenities that I mentioned, there's going to be some locations that are going to be uh, added to, let's say, a church or a shopping center, mm -hmm. where some of the LA um, e hub chargers will be placed. Mm -hmm. It won't be a full service location, but it'll still have the the same accessibility and the same rate structure that the full service locations do. Mm -hmm. And then, sorry, one more question. Mm -hmm. um, with the kind of dual use and emergency operations, I was also glad to hear that thinking and sort of the potential for these employee hubs to be a little bit of resilience hubs as well. Is that, um, are all of the imagined uses internal DWP emergency ops or are we also thinking about community kind of service during emergencies? So they could be deployed as um, community rooms and cooling centers oh, right. you as did well. So the, right. the, both the eHub and the LA Connect centers can be converted to cooling centers during you know major heat wave events because mm -hmm. we've, we've found in the past that those are very valuable yeah. to our residents. So they, yes, they could, they could be converted to, for both those purposes. The LA Connect uh, locations, we, we do have... Uh, uh, the initial phase of those, we have seven locations identified already. Uh, two of them are in the downtown area. Um, one is in, uh, two are in the valley, one is in Eagle Rock, one's in South LA, and one's the west side. So we're trying to spread them out the best we can. Those are all uh, DWP owned facilities that will be, you know, repurposed for that. And then we're, at the same time, we're looking into um, utilizing either new purchased facilities or other other type district, uh, excuse me, district uh, DWP facilities for that purpose. And I have a question. In the first type typology you mentioned, it, did, did, did I understand that you could go there to sort of get support in terms of permitting and other and facilitating project, you know, delivery? For the LA Connect, uh -huh. for it basically our public interface counters, mm -hmm. which is the power new business, mm -hmm. water new business, yes. encroachment permits, yes. mm -hmm. and, um, and the key accounts yes. 
um, where right now they have locations that are spread all over the place. Mm -hmm. And they have different systems for you know getting the project moving and getting the permits done and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The idea is to make kind of pattern after what the city's been doing for years with a one stop uh -huh. for one call to city hall kind mm -hmm. of concept. Mm -hmm. And we want to do that not only with the water and power public interface counters, but also make a, a campus that also combines LA City's yeah. public interface okay. counters okay. in right. one location. Great. Good collaboration. Uh, anything else or any other questions? Um, I'd just like to um, both uh, commend the uh, planning that is going, that is ongoing around um, this range of issues, both as it relates to how we think about uh, increasing our capacity um, and our performance with field office operations. I mean, it's, uh, you know, thinking less about how we can take over huge plots of land and really how we better leverage and utilize mm -hmm. uh, things that we already have is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really um, interested in and, and, and happy to see the thinking that's going on around um, what the future of work looks like and how telecommuting um, the implications of that and our need to think through um, how we support that workforce um, and the impact on our actual, again, real estate needs. Um, the department, um, and then of course the LA Connect is a really fantastic model uh, and leaning in heavily uh, in terms of how we better uh, present a better public serving face to the public and make it more convenient. Uh, I, I do want to acknowledge how um, significant all of these, uh, all of this planning and all of these strategies are, what significant departures they are from the status quo. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that's not a small thing for an agency of this size that's been doing things in a particular way for a very, very long time. Um, also, uh, to your uh, question about where some of these hubs are located, um, you know, the department you mentioned uh, potentially using other properties and EV charging stations and on land that we don't own but could collaborate with, you know, if they're willing partners out in the community, uh, had the opportunity just this weekend to visit eight uh, churches in mm. South LA. Um, and one church in particular continues to stand out, serves a migrant population on the corner of Crenshaw and Adams. Uh, it's RLA, it's a three acre site. Um, and we don't often think about the amount of real estate in the hands of uh, some of these mm -hmm. really significant institutions in our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, and these sites are very interested in working with us to facilitate the build out of charging locations and also um, solar infrastructure in underserved communities. So I know that the department is looking at these kinds of collaborations and um, and I, I'm very excited about what we can achieve. And it's similar, uh, Commissioner Lair, to your focus on schools and school mm -hmm. sites. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, now, I mean, we know the big stuff that we can do and that we're on track to do in order to facilitate this transition. It's the success of it now will be about how we execute mm -hmm. the details and the little stuff yeah. and how we work with our community, uh, with our customers, with our residents on every single little piece of it. And to see so much of it coming together all at the same time, I think, I, I think about Chatsworth in a similar way. It is looking at all of the pieces and all of the details around the pieces that will make this a success. And so um, really, really, really good work here. Um, thank you uh, for presenting it at even this level. 
Uh, and I really look forward to seeing uh, the more detailed rollout of some of these plans as we start to move forward pretty aggressively over the next yeah. uh, you know, weeks, months, and years. I have one more uh, comment on that to, to the president's point about kind of an integrated approach. Um, at our previous board meeting, we had a presentation on DLP's biodiversity plans and um, one of the targets this year is to identify locations in DWP property where we might add native plants and access to nature for communities and would love to connect with you and learn more and see if there's potential with some of these EV charging sites to also work with the water side of the house and have any, you know, even if it's small, like a demonstration garden of native plants that could educate people about the turf rebate program, for example, while they're waiting for their car to be charged. I think there might be some nice opportunity Fantastic for, idea, yeah. for taking an integrated approach. So let's let's chat and thank you very much. This was wonderful. Well, thank you. And I I really appreciate the forward thinking board and executive staff that we have here that you know enables us to do this kind of thing. So appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for bringing that up. That was one of the goals this year is to more formalize that biodiversity program so it does touch all these kind of projects. So we're not operating in a small little silo, but really yes. spreading across everything that we do. Thank yes. you. Um, Thanks, Tom. Terrific. Thank you so much. And. Uh, Let's now go to M. Oh, that was it. On the management reports, we're in filed items. Uh, any questions or comments with respect to any of the filed items? So I should do that. Okay. Um, minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Commissioner Katz? Aye. Commissioner Lair? Aye. President McLean Hill? Aye. Vice President Neiman Brady? Aye. Four ayes, motion adopted. Uh, terrific. Uh, we'll now call item L15. Uh, and we have a public comment on that item. Hi, Madam President and Commissioners. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Lauren Vaughn and the Metabolic Studio. My name is Kelly Majewski. I'm the project manager for the Bending the River Back to the City project. Um, we just we just finished uh, in October the completion of the in-river portion of the construction project. Uh, we're very excited about that. And we're about to be starting and focusing all of our attention on the well and the water treatment on our site. So super excited. And we'll be get planning to um, begin delivering water to the State Historic Park in 2025. Um, so on behalf of Lauren, I wanted to express our appreciation to Marty Adams for uh, and his staff uh, and assistance for uh, the continued sp support uh, for the project from the beginning. And we also wanted to thank uh, Mia Lair for her interest and support of this project over the years. And with that, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, thank you very much. No, thank you. I very much appreciate your being here. And is um, Mr. Gonzalez in the room? Yes, he is. Thank you. Would you mind just very um, briefly walking us through the presentation on this project? Sure thing. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you. As Kelly mentioned, it's been a long-standing partnership with Metabolic, and despite the fact that there's many words on this slide, <laughs> I want to emphasize kind of the key remarks you made earlier about partnership, collaboration. The way Metabolic sees it is that they've hit, to some extent, almost a finish line on a project that's been in place for over 15 years in working with the city. Um, what you see here is an evolution of the project um, and the board action specifically, starting back in 2017, where there was conceptions of the project being um, a water wheel. It evolved in 2021. It changed in scope given the feedback from the state and federal officials, given the significance of the project, it's been reduced to a rubber dam. <clears throat> now fast forward to today, Metabolic again, thinking about the comments that we've made as a city, the impact it would have, 
and again, trying to preserve that celebration of water and what the river represents to us. Um, they've reduced the scope of the project again one more time. It's gonna be an inlet structure coupled with a diversion treatment system. In my mind, as, as overseeing the city's recycled water system here at DWP, they've taken our feedback about trying to divert water in a way that allows us to treat it and still use it for offsetting potable supplies. That's what we want to do. So they've taken our feedback. Again, they've re revised the project scope. They've adjusted it in a way that meets all of our objectives. And what is here before you is an agreement between the city and Metabolic. That would be LA Sanitation and Environment, DWP, and Metabolic on an agreement of roles and responsibilities. The key thing for D DWP is preserving our water right, which we maintained. There is no financial obligation with the agreement per se. LA San is gonna play a big role as it pertains to the maintenance and operation of this facility. And Metabolic is, as you know, um, gonna take care of the construction, the design, the engineering, and just the oversight of the entire project. So that's what this complicated slide is intending to, to show here. Um, this is a little bit more detail specifically about the water right, the city's obligation. Again, the key point being is that we preserved our water right. There is no financial obligation on behalf of DWP towards this project, but we do um, fully support what, what they intend uh, or are trying to achieve as a result of the project. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Lair. Would you have uh, any comments on this? No, it's a it's a wonderful project, and um, for some of you who haven't been there, I might, might suggest um, that that a, a tour um, is is really interesting, and it's it's you know complicated um, in so many ways because getting that water out of you know the river bottom and then lifting it and taking it under the rail to actually, you know, it's just a proof of concept, everything we're talking about, recycling water. And um, it's it's just think, it's wonderful to see and to think that, you know, 30, 40, 50 years from now, it's a legacy that especially metabolic is leaving behind, but in approving this and in all the work that, uh, that Marty and others have done on the project that, you know, the, this this park, and if you, you haven't been there in a while for an event, it's just verdant and, you know, so much going on there and so, many, so much programming that comes out of also Metabolic Studios on the site that is really enlivens the place above and beyond. And there is a fabulous farmer's market. And if you want to know how many different kinds of mushrooms <laughs> you could be eating, you could go to the farmer's market on Thursday starting at three o'clock. And those are all the kinds of programs that are being sort of supported on, mm -hmm. on the part of the LA State Historic Partners, but many, many people, including Metabolic Studios, who've been participating and really advocating for the community to to, to be active and to actually, some of them make a living as, um, I think they're called park ambassadors if I'm not wrong, but something like that. It's wonderful. Uh, thank you. Um, I only uh, invited Commissioner Lairs to provide more texture. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> as um, certainly our water rights are of preeminent concern. Yes. But yet this is again another example mm -hmm. of how in the pursuit of our primary business, mm -hmm. we can make a significant difference, mm -hmm. contribute to and provide leadership around um, how we preserve and promote um, environmental and sustainability and community interest um, as well. So uh, really thank you for that and thank you for the presentation. Uh, if you can make one request. Um, <laughs> It, it seems like you may have seen drawings or no some pictures. Mark, uh, <laughs> mark up, it, uh, you know, 
both you and, and Commissioner Lair have expressed the, that there is a little bit of complexity to this project. Mm -hmm. um, so would you please follow up with the commission uh, with some diagrams and sure. uh, it, we should have those generally in, in sure. the, the presentations. We'll do. Um, and that would be helpful, but it sounds like the description you gave is sufficient for us to go forward at this time. We'll yeah. Do. I, I would second that. It'd be great to see. But I also just want to comment on this project. I think it really is an important example of how the city can work across departments, Bureau of Engineering and LA San and DWP together. And it's also an example of how we can really work across disciplines, you know, solving these kind of challenges that we're facing. It's not just an engineering problem and bringing artists into this and creating this kind of inspiring work. I think it's very important to our ability to solve the kind of region-wide challenges that we're solving. And last, I just wanna comment in case folks didn't catch it in the LA Times piece about this project, um, but I found it really fascinating and inspiring that in the removal of concrete at the base of the river, there were seeds that actually were then still able to grow and sprout after having been buried for so long. And I think that's such a powerful metaphor um, for all of us to consider in the kind of work that we're doing of restoring this river and our city um, and you know building these kind of partnerships. So thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. So farmer's market Thursday at three. Field <laughs> <laughs> right. trip. Got it. Um, uh, would you please, uh, oh, is there a motion to approve uh, item 15? Motion to approve. Uh, second. Second. Commissioner Katz. Aye. Commissioner Lair. Aye. President McLean Hill. Aye. Vice President Lynn Brady. Aye. Four ayes motion adopted. Um, we've come to the close of our agenda. We've got item L19 for which I will not be present after which we will um, move into a closed session. Um, and so um, I will not be back to this, uh, this portion of the meeting. Um, it is 11.15, so we are running really well from an open session perspective. I understand we have a pretty extensive closed session. Um, does reconvening at 11.30 work for folks? Yeah, I, I, I'm departing at 12.15. Okay, terrific. Then um, are we going to the conference room or back here? Uh, we're closed. We're closed session. Your pleasure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, did anyone have any questions on this or shall we do a motion to approve for 19? Yeah. That's okay. the. I'll put forward the motion to approve item 19. Can, um, what, is the, what is the conference? This is COP28, the major climate summit. And who else is going from Los Angeles? Uh, lots of different people. Um, I know UCLA sends a delegation from the law school. I'm sure there are other folks from the city attending. I don't know if anyone else from DWP is attending. Marty, do we have anyone? No. Mm -hmm. But there will be other Los Angeles representatives. Mm -hmm. Is Nancy Sutley going? Uh, no, she's not. She would consider it, but she's not able to go mm -hmm. unless, unless okay. something has changed. So. Okay. I think there might be other representatives of mayor's office going, but I'm not sure who. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do we have a second? It's um, I second, and I think um, uh, LA's representation at a at a venue and an event like this is uh, speaks volumes to what we're trying to accomplish from a climate perspective. Agreed. I think um, Los Angeles and California have stepped up and provided leadership in in areas where sometimes we don't have an integrated uh, national approach on this. So I'm glad to see this uh, leadership from our board president. Um, I think we can take the vote, commission staff. Commissioner Katz. Aye. Commissioner Lair. Aye. Vice President Neiman Brady. Aye. Three ayes motion adopted. Okay. I believe that it concludes uh, open session and we will now um, close the meeting and move to closed session. Oh, can Wait I one second, go ahead? Yes, can I? Magic words. The board shall <laughs> recess into closed session. Um, to consider the items listed on um, agenda item M. The board will publicly report any action taken in closed session and the vote or abstention thereon of every member present in accordance with California Government Code 54957.1.
correct? 30, is that correct? Okay. 